Hello ePlan users, uh, this is Luke again with, uh, uh, let's say, a tutorial, something I uh, came across while working for a customer. Uh, the guy wanted me to create a part that would mimic this uh, three, let's say, three connection gr uh, ground stud. Um, so there is no symbol readily available in uh, ePlan, so I had to create one myself, and uh, that's the final result. And to test it, I'm uh, trying the signal tracking. So what I'm mimicking here is I'm coming from the potential or uh, the, a potential connection point, which represents the ground from the the utility and uh, I'm testing to see the signal uh, if it's passing through all these different points so it does and uh, also does the potential pass through yes it does so how do I get to uh, a point where I can uh, have that potential be transferred uh, to all three pins uh, well, we'll see in a, uh, in a moment, but uh, for now, I want to show you what the default device connection points uh, to connection points uh, will do on its own. And uh, let me just get rid of that uh, extra one here. So by default, I can try to pass the signal and of course it will pass uh, through. I can also pass the potential. And of course it will pass right through. Um, oh, one thing, of course, uh, in order to pass the signal, I had to remove that checkbox here with signal isolation because uh, the default uh, double-ended connection point comes with uh, signal isolation enabled so if I put it back to the default condition then of course uh, the potential will go through but not the signal and is in this case uh, I do need the signal to go through so first thing remove the with signal isolation and so let's try again signal okay now the signal goes right through the pin but i would like it to be distributed to these other pins as well so a first thing to do is to make sure that all these device connection points have um, actual two connection point designation like one one and two two and finally three three uh, the reason is that uh, the, the, the the new logic available uh, since I think version 2.7 is not going to work specifically for that uh, symbol if if we don't have two connection point designation. So let's try again signal tracking and again I get the same result I'm only going through uh, each pole and this is expected of course. Now the trick to get this to work is to use the new syntax that is allowed in the symbol logic. Like I said, this is uh, this has been since 2.7 or something like that. And now what we see is that the, the transfer potential for pin number one is transferred to pin number two. So the, these pins are actually the, the the internal connection point of the symbol, and this symbol has two pins or two connection point. So pin one is going to pin two, and of course pin two is going to pin one. That way we have uh, the signal or potential being transferred in both direction. But on top of that, what we need to do, 
and this is the syntax that we have to adopt, I need to add the other connection points uh, from the device itself. And in our case, it's a black box with three uh, connection points. And the other connection points in this case are named two and three. So here, pin one of this pin or this symbol will transfer to pin or connection point number two on that symbol, but also on number two and three of the other pins. And I'm going to just repeat that here. So two and three. Uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to turn that internal connection to conductor wire. That's going to make things uh, have the proper color uh, later on. So I OK that. And then I do the same for the two other symbols. So this one is actually pin number two on the device. So I want the potential to be transferred to pin one and pin 3 of the black box device. So I'm going to go like this, 1 and 3. And you notice I'm using quotes. That's because it has numbers. And to differentiate the number of those pins with the number or the designation of the other pins on the, the, on the black box, I have to use quotes here. And now I'm going to do the last pin, logic. And so this is pin number three, and it has to connect to the device pin number one and two. And I'm going to repeat that here, number one and two. OK, well, let's see. What do we have now? Does the potential go through? Hmm, it only goes through there. So there's something not right. Does the signal go through? No, it does not. So what did I do wrong? Let me check with these ones here. Oh, it's not a um, semicolon here. It's just a comma. Sorry about that. Comma, comma, comma. Okay, I'll pause now and I'll, I'll do the other two uh, in a minute. Okay, now I've been, uh, I've entered uh, all the proper information using a comma instead of a semicolon on, on these pin. And you know, these uh, one uh, semicolon one and two, two, three, three, that's just a display thing. So for all intents and purposes, I had already prepared a set of pins just for the sake of demonstration. And here I've uh, made, uh, you know, using the display properties, I've, I've made the, the things look better. And now let's see, potential, does it track? Oh yes, now it goes through all three circuits. Does the signal transfer? And yes, it does. So, uh, so the, the point here is that uh, with ePlan, it is now possible to use this extra logic to uh, pass the signal or potential from one pin of a black box to another pin on that same black box or device uh, in such a way that uh, it can be saved uh, in a macro or, or, or whatever. Uh, and uh, of course here you notice the yellow is because the, those values are not the default values. I could just, uh, for example, right click and go to default and it would bring all the default value back, but I, I don't want that for now. So again, let's test this potential and or signal tracking. And I'm tracking on all.
pins. So I hope you could learn something from that and uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. Thanks. Bye-bye.